Now, now that we've got our motor connected so that we've got the full weight and you need to have the motor, the prop, everything that's going on the plane, we need to have it all on, all loaded up fully so that we can get the centre of the gravity right. Now we're looking uh, to have for the best stability um, of this sort of a shape plane, this um, I guess based on an extra 300, we're looking to have the weight in the front third of the wing. So if I put my two fingers under there at the moment, it's dropping back. So the, the weight at the moment is sort of just about maybe halfway along the, the wing. And we've built up this little jig just out of a block of wood and two thick bamboo skewers. You could use two pens or two pencils, anything you like really. And you can sort of work out where the centre of gravity is by letting it tip, so sort of placing it in a different spot and just seeing where you can get it to almost sit before it comes out of balance. So that's pretty close there, that's where the centre of gravity would be and we're looking at being behind the servos. Now we want it to be up at the front, just in front of the servos in this control rod, uh, this carbon fibre rod here. So I've got a battery, this is just one of the two cells that, that I'm using. Um, and I'm going to use a bit of Velcro so that I can push it back and forth. Just cut a little strip. So, one side of the Velcro on the back of the battery. Making sure it's stuck on pretty well. You don't want it falling off mid-flight. And I'm going to put the battery uh, along along here, so anywhere between there and back there and hopefully in those two positions I can uh, centre out the centre of gravity to be in the front third of the wing. strip of velcro there, I'm going to be able to change the location of the battery to get the weight centred. So to start with, I'll give it a try just in the middle, get my little jig out and put it right on that carbon fibre rod and you can see at the moment it's still tipping backwards, so we'll bring the battery a little bit further forward. We might not be able to get it perfect, but at least we can get it a bit closer. Oh, amazing, there we go. So, I'm just behind the carbon fibre rod, but I'm still in the front third of the wing, and I'd say for what we're after, uh, our plane's gonna be relatively stable. And if we changed up to a three cell battery, obviously that's going to be a bit heavier or a bigger capacity battery, a bit heavier and we could get it to be in the front third a little bit more. Um, a bit more information on, on the centre of gravity and how it changes the stability of the plane is in the modules that uh, John Danzi has been able to put together and you can find them on the NAMIG website along with all the instructions to build this plane. So we're fairly well ready to go. Um, nice day outside, so we'll quickly jump on the simulator, check that we've got our flying skills up still, and then we'll go out and test it, hopefully with a bit of a buddy box system. Okay, so we uh, just found we had a bit of a problem. Um, the screws that we put into the servos before were quite long, so they were these longer ones here. And in every servo kit you get three screws, and we had the two screws that are supposed to be used to screw the servo down into a bit of plastic or whatever it's been used for. But we've just used glue for that. And uh, we use these longer screws in the, the arms here, whereas we could have, should have used the, the shorter ones. And I think what's happened is the longer ones have gone all the way down through the servo and shorted something out. And uh, in these, in this, the servos all sort of went a bit crazy. So we've taken all the screws out and put the shorter ones back in and we actually ruined uh, one of these servos from, from making that mistake. So we had to replace, just cut this one out and replace it, which was pretty easy. 
and uh, now we've got everything so that the, our control surfaces are fairly even and once we get out in the field we'll talk about that a little bit further. Um, everything's nice and, and strong and sturdy and if I use the controller I can just do another test and just test that we've got full movement because that's what happened to this servo, it just had only half of the movement that it should have. Full movement both directions on the ailerons, uh, on the elevator and on the rudder. And I guess we can test that our, our motor's on strong enough at the moment with the glue in that when I fire it up, uh, the plane will want to take off. And the motor's not coming off. So that should be strong enough until it has a crash and hopefully it will come off then. So we're going to um, hook up the controllers to the simulator and have a quick practice and then we'll go out and have a bit of a fly. Okay, so here we are in the CAD lab having a bit of a practice on the simulator. We've got uh, a laptop hooked up to the big screen up there uh, and we've just got the Spectrum DX5 plugged in with a 3.5mm jack to the USB. If you do a bit of a search on the net, you can find them for about 10 bucks. And we're running just a free flight simulator program called uh, FMS, which is uh, Flight Simulator or Flight Model Simulator. And to get it to link up with the joystick interface or this this control that we're actually going to use for flying the plane outside so you can get used to it. We can just go into controls here, go to um, analog controls, so sorry, controls, analog controls, joystick interface, mapping and collaboration. Now I've got rudder set to, and I'll just see if I can get a bit closer there for us. Uh, rudder set to four, elevator set to three, aileron set to two, and throttle set to one. And the only one that's inverted is the aileron, or untick the aileron, and it should be set up. And if we just jiggle the controls around, you'll see those first four channels moving um, up and down. And that's with the DX5E. If you use the DX6I, it's going to be slightly different. But you just need to collaborate them um, and go through the prompts. So we'll go OK to that. And uh, we can see up on the big screen that uh, we can get. So sorry, here we are up on the big screen. And you can see that we get a bit of practice out. Uh, in a virtual field before we take our plane out into the onto the oval and uh, get a bit of practice and crash it a couple of times so that we don't uh, use up 50 to 100 bucks every time the plane goes down. We're just using a standard plane in flight model simulator. It's uh, you can get one that simulates a little bit more like the extra 300. And if you do a bit of a search online for uh, FMS models that are the extra 300 or something like that, you get a bit, bit of a better simulation, but really um, this is just to get a bit of an idea of, of how the plane responds and trying to get your thinking right so that when the plane's going back towards you, you can use the right uh, ailerons to, to roll the plane back and forth. It's a bit confusing for a start, so it's good to have a bit of a practice out on the uh, simulator.